Hello everyone, uh, this is Mandy T. This is gonna be my new channel. Uh, I'm doing uh, this new channel because I want to revamp. And the first video I'll be uploading is a filling video on the cult of Ezra Miller. Now, Ezra Miller has been an interesting topic. Um, to say the least, um, he, <laughs> they, actually, um, I've, like, a couple of months ago, I tried, uh, researching a lot on Ezra Miller and what they've done because of all the news that was coming out. I wanted to research to make a YouTube video on the timeline of the stuff that happened with Ezra Miller and it was just so much that I didn't have time to um, actually finish the video so it's just I literally started at the research and stuff there um, so it's nice to see that there's finally a maybe this will be like a full um, a full, what's the word I'm looking for? A full breakdown of Ezra Miller. Um, now, obviously, uh, what I'm okay, most curious about with what's happening with Ezra Miller is if DC is gonna um, is gonna keep him keep day them as a flash as a flash. Um, because I've heard rumors that they might, because the Flash trailer looks really good. It looks amazing, but like Ezra Miller comes with so much baggage that even I, as like a new person in the film industry, would not want to work with him um, at all. But yeah, I'm excited to watch this video. The video comes from um, Philian. He's a good uh, YouTuber uh, with uh, 828k subscribers and uh, a lot of videos that I actually might watch later. But yeah, uh, let's start this. Hi, um, this is Ezra Miller. Oh, this morning, Ezra Miller pleaded not guilty. Let me, let me put the... It's... Oh, yeah. With one L. There. Okay. To both charges of let's restart. Hi, um, this is Ezra Miller. Oh. This morning, Ezra Miller pleaded not guilty to both charges of felony burglary and larceny. AKA the Bengal Ghouls, the Mad Goose Wizard. I'm not transgender, non binary, don't want to be searched by a man. I'm transgender, non binary, don't want to be searched by a man. Why? Did you want to fight? Is that the deal? Oh. Whoa, bro, bro, bro. You want to fight? Yeah. That's all I'm going to do. They tell me my name He's is a Ezra good actor. Miller, and they tell me that this is called Fishing for Answers. Uh, 
Ezra Miller was on track to become a Hollywood A-lister from an he early really age. In 2008, he dropped out of high school at 16, after the release of his first film, After School. Just two years later, he had a lead role in Beware the Gonzo and another role in Every Day, which both premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival. Ezra quickly became well-known among management corporations and found himself landing even bigger roles in more popular films. Some of these earlier performances include cameos in the Showtime comedy series California Cation and the film We Need to Talk About Kevin. However, most consider Ezra's breakout role to be in the 2012 film The Perks of Being a Wallflower. These roles that. may have tested his acting, but the opportunity of being cast as a superhero seemed all too enticing. That's why Ezra's most recognizable character came in 2017 as The Flash in DC Comics Justice How many roles League. Did they have? people with special abilities. You see, I believe enemies are coming. Stop right there. I'm in. As good as an actor he may seem, Ezra's choices outside the studio point towards a more disturbing reality. When Ezra was 19 years old, he had his first run-in with law enforcement. On June 11th, 2011, Ezra was found with a quote, brown vegetable material during a standard traffic stop. He was charged with marijuana possession, but a New Jersey judge dismissed the charge and issued him two disorderly conduct citations and a $600 fine. Everyone deserves a second chance, but this may have been the first mistake that led Ezra to believe he could escape the law. Around the same time of his marijuana possession, similar to our old friend Jared Leto, Ezra was part of a band called Sons of an Illustrious Father. It seems Hollywood degenerates must complete their Guitar Hero prerequisite before allegedly abusing any girls. In 2012, the public got a deeper look into Ezra's life, who openly stated he struggled with a confused adolescence and came out as queer, but never fully accepted the term and avoided using it. You did an interview with Out Magazine, mm -hmm. so you say, I'm queer. Word. The use of the word queer, yeah, word. What is it? What does it mean? You didn't really define what it meant. It means that, like, I... I think at this point um, in our world, uh, we've got a really confused uh, idea of the way gender and sexuality works, and I think we've created this really superfluous sort of like uh, binary uh, um, in in the way we think about gender. And I, mm -hmm. I guess I, I identify as queer because I don't I, I, I don't identify with that. I, I think that makes us less whole. Wait. He or they later ref. What? He identifies as queer, but doesn't identify with it. I mean, I agree that uh, people online nowadays uh, they don't. Uh, they always. They sometimes make being queer. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Um, they they over exaggerate things sometimes people online but wait let me listen to that again idea of the way gender and sexuality works and I think we've created this really superfluous sort of like uh, binary uh, um in, in the way we think about gender, and I... It's a good I conversation. I, 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 I've never had this conversation I with... I, I, I don't identify with that. I, I think that makes anyone whole. He queer. or they I'm later rephrased his identity sense. and is quoted as saying, I don't identify as a man. I don't identify as a woman. I barely identify as a human. It's hard to what? know when yeah, Ezra is being as genuine, that. as he often maliciously uses the LGBTQ community's ideology to justify his own, quote, non-human, untouchable god complex upon those around him. It's not uncommon for young actors to stray from their path of success. Oftentimes, adults use them and disregard any industry trauma associated with Hollywood's hidden vices. For That's example, true. during an interview in 2018, Ezra told the press of an incident that occurred earlier in his career with an unnamed director and producer. Ezra publicly said, they gave me wine and I was underaged. 
They were like, hey, want to be in our movie about gay revolution? And I was like, no, you guys are monsters. There is no way to know the validity of this story as he doesn't name anyone involved and no facts have come out since then. Nonetheless, Ezra didn't let anyone stop him. In 2014, Ezra landed a significant franchise role as Barry Allen or The Flash. This role undoubtedly fed into his ego and gave him all of the wealth he needed to to quite literally do whatever he wanted. Clear signs of mental distress combined with a Hollywood salary never makes for a happy outcome. Dealing with unaddressed trauma as a youth, the full scope of Ezra's abusive behavior manifested as an adult. The years ahead would shed some light on Ezra's private life and how he acted off camera. From an acting standpoint, Ezra loves to get deeply involved in his roles and method act for certain characters, which shouldn't be confused with his delusions of grandeur. To start things off, in February of 2020, while filming for his upcoming movie, Fantastic Beasts, Ezra converted his Airbnb in Iceland into a spiritual commune. One participant claimed everyone, which included a series of artists and expats, was hypnotized, and people began to believe they had mystical powers. Also, the Airbnb had uncomfortable beds, which is why today's video is sponsored by Helix. Helix wow. Sleep makes premium mattresses and bedding, customized to fit nice. your needs, conveniently shipped in a box, right to your doorstep. You don't even have to leave your house. Everybody's different. pitch about an uncomfortable overpriced mattress your new helix comes rolled in a box to you i actually had fun setting up my new mattress it took me just under five minutes to carry it up the stairs and watch my new bed come to life you don't even have to take it from me sebastian wouldn't be sleeping on it if it wasn't the best if it makes you nervous to buy something that you haven't tried yet in person helix offers a 100 night sleep trial this gives you a little bit over three months to completely fall in love with your new bed. And if you don't, they will come and pick it up for you, no questions asked, and you will get a full refund. Best of all, every Helix comes with a 10-year warranty. They offer flexible payment plans and even have financing options available. So a girl at the Airbnb... Thank you to Helix for sponsoring this video. Other people at the Airbnb also claimed that they were afraid of Ezra's erratic behavior and emotional outbursts. As Barry Allen, the fastest man alive, and Credence Barebone, a troubled orphan, Ezra was bound to come across thrilled DC and Harry Potter fans wherever he went. Though one fan in particular received a bit more than expected. That was messed up, I remember that. In April of 2020, a fan greeted Ezra outside of a bar in Reykjavik, Iceland. Little did she know, was he was answer. having absolutely none of it. You learn it? Did you want to fight? Is that to you? Whoa, bro, 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 bro. fight? Following the release of the video, Miller faced significant criticism and calls for him to address the incident publicly. In response, Miller issued a statement apologizing for his actions and acknowledging the harm that he caused. Miller stated that he was deeply sorry for what had happened and that he had not <laughs> intended to no, harm anyone. He also explained that he was suffering from a serious panic attack at the time and that his behavior was a result of that. While Miller's okay, apology good. was widely shared and some fans even expressed support for him, others remained skeptical and critical of his actions, and rightfully so. From the Icelandic woman's point of view, she explained how she approached Ezra to ask about his flip-flops. After a quote, cordial conversation, things turned south as Ezra snapped and challenged her in a fight, but this was far from the only account of Ezra's aggressive behavior. Another anonymous woman, going by the name Nadia, claimed she had a two-year friends with benefits phase with Ezra. The relationship came to an abrupt end one night when Nadia told Ezra he couldn't smoke inside her apartment. Nadia exclaimed, quote, that just set him off. I asked him to leave 20 times, but he insulted me, called me transphobic and a Nazi, while spreading tobacco leaves on the floor. No. At one point during Ezra's- Wait. That just set me, set them off. Nadia explained, I asked him to leave about 20 times more, more, they started insulting me, I'm a transphobic piece of shit, 
I'm a Nazi. The latter accusation would be egregious on Miller's part, as Nadia is a descendant of Holocaust survivors. That is messed up. That is messed up. The word going it became so stressful for me. The woman continued. They were going around my house, looking at everything, touching everything, spreading tobacco tobacco leaves on the floor. It felt disgusting and very intrusive. Nagia stressed that she never felt at risk of sexual assault, though she did feel as though mother could somehow attack me physically. She she added she felt so she totally felt unsafe to the during the whole ordeal. Tantrum, he is quoted as saying, that I am the maker up. of planets. Tobacco is sacred. Clearly, there is a significant gear missing from Ezra's already decaying cerebellum. Two years later, in 2022, Ezra went on a string of unhinged and aggressive yep. tirades akin to someone on the verge of insanity. He kicked off the year in January by posting a cryptic message addressing the Ku Klux Klan. He honestly would have just been better off with more explaining and less rambling. Hi, um, this is Ezra Miller. Uh, aka the Bengal Ghouls, the Mad Goose Wizard, and um, this is a message for the Beulahville chapter of the North Carolina Ku Klux Klan. Hello, first of all, how are y'all doing? Um, it's me. Um, look, if y'all want to die, I suggest just killing yourselves with your own guns, okay? Um, Otherwise, keep doing exactly what you're doing right now, and you know what I'm talking about, and then, you know, um, we'll do it for you if that's really what you want. Okay, talk to you soon, okay? Bye! It evidently shows that he is incapable of controlling his anger. When he lashes out, it's basically at random. A fan on the street, a woman he had a relationship with, some KKK chapter in North Carolina? Although, sure, why not? There is no method to this madness. Ezra's anger is effectively levied against anyone at any time, and headline after headline indicate a massive disconnect between his mental state and the reality around him. Just two months later, in March, this time on a Zoom call, Ezra was charged with disorderly conduct and harassment stemming from a late night fiasco at a karaoke bar in Hawaii. The Hawaii police stated Miller began began yelling obscenities and grabbed the microphone from a 23-year-old woman singing. He also lunged at a man playing darts and was told to calm down Dang, several times. To, to Nonetheless, Ezra's behavior only landed him a $500 fine, oh. while two additional counts were dismissed by a judge. Not only did he wow. fight patrons at a karaoke bar, weeks before, cops were that called for it? another disturbance at a- That was it? Really? A fraudulent fine, and the two other ones were dismissed. Stop. Like, some people, like, you just go to show how messed up the system is uh, for rich people and, so and celebrities. Because, like, some, if it was like any other, like, black person that like, attacked someone at, just for attacking someone at the bar or on the street. They would be going to like 20 years in prison in the state, but just a five dollar fine, and that's like pennies for Ezra Miller. Pennies. Bar. In this video, you can see Ezra getting denied entry to a bar with what looks like to be an employee preventing him from going inside. Apparently, Ezra was only given a trespass warning. No less wow. than a day later, a temporary restraining order was filed against Ezra by two high yeah, residents. Allegedly, Miller burst into their hostile bedroom and threatened the victims by saying, I will bury you and your slut wife. Wow. The two victims also also claim Ezra stole personal belongings from them, such as social security cards, wallets, that, passports, identity. driver's yeah. license, and bank cards. Strangely, this restraining order was dismissed by what? a judge 
What's two wrong weeks with the later, as per the couple's request, it's starting to look like Ezra uses that Hollywood salary to buy his way out of every problem. Problems he created all by himself. By early April, ultimately, Ezra's mounting headlines forced Warner Brothers and DC people. to hold an emergency meeting to discuss his problematic actions. To save face, it's they decided to halt all productions that involve his characters. Except, that was a lie. That same month, in April of 2022, Ezra was arrested on a second-degree assault charge. While back in Hawaii, this time at a private party, he threw a chair and hit a woman in the head, leaving her with a half-inch gash on her forehead. He was picked up by police in the early morning hours and taken into custody. There's just one problem. According to the Hawaii Tribune Herald, a police log indicated that Ezra was booked on suspicion of second-degree assault and released at 4.05 a.m. No charges. But there's a pending investigation. What is there to investigate? Oh, right. Yeah. Nothing. Picture this. You wait a couple days, noise dies down, you pay the woman several grand, no charges, and you go about your merry life with zero consequences. Anyways, I'm sure Ezra saw it as just some quirky mistake. It probably wasn't very funny when he found out second-degree assault is a Class C felony that carries a potential five-year prison sentence. Considering he's not in prison, and this event is old news, Ezra got away without a scratch. I don't think an That's average sound. person would be awarded such luxuries. For Ezra, one can only handle so much violence and chaos. Literally, if, if, uh, say if I went and just like broke into someone's house, break one of their wines, and then left, I'll be arrested the next day. I'll be arrested the next day. If um, I dine and dashed, these will be called and so And like, no investigation, really? Nada? Oh. <laughs> It was time to settle down and find something better to do than steal passports and hurl chairs. Something new, like grooming a 12-year-old girl. Yeah. Ezra Miller has always made his activism known to the world. In 2016, at a protest against the Dakota Access Pipeline, 24-year-old Ezra Miller made friends with a 12-year-old activist named Takata Iron Eyes, first of all. Excuse me? She would listen to his music and hang out with his band, and Miller kept in touch with the young girl, promising to support- First of all, what's wrong with the parents? Because there was something wrong with the parents allowing their child to keep um, hanging out with this 20 over something year old man and not do anything about it not do any supervising allowing her to go to this to the flash to the set alone but my parents at 18 at 18 my parents, my mom would have come with me like at 18 if i was invited to a set and i had to travel to get there my mom would have either had my, had my older sister or my dad or herself come with me she would have never allowed me to, or she would not have even, even allowed me to go. Like, no way. Or, you would have, let's say, for example, my little sister once went on a trip, a camp, a camp trip, um, to LA, and to accompany her. They first went to New York, to my aunt's place. Then my older sister accompanied her to LA, but make sure she was good, and then left. And then my little sister went back to New York after the trip was over. So yeah, there was no way they were gonna, like, 
I think it was my little sister that went. Either her or my dad. One of those two. They were, they're just, it's common sense not to let a 12 year old go alone to a set. That's how I look at her future music career. According to Takata's parents, Ezra even came by their home several times unannounced. In no. 2017, he flew her out to London to see the set of yeah, Fantastic Beasts. She was 14, he was 25. Her parents Wait, allege that he tried to sleep with her in the same bed and even gave her drugs and alcohol. This bizarre relationship got even worse when a family friend claimed they saw Ezra and Takata having sex in they 2021. Sex? Though Takata told the media the claims were so very false. The same year, Ezra tried to convince Takata to drop out of school, probably because Ezra himself didn't finish his own education. And whether Ezra knows it or not, his behavior aligns with that of cult manipulation. Takata's parents were granted a protective order from the courts, preventing Ezra from interacting with her or her parents. However, the courts were unable to serve Ezra papers as they had no idea where he was. Before deleting his Instagram, Ezra brazenly taunted police by posting an image that read, You cannot touch me. I am in that. another I universe. Does he actually think he's the Flash? Yeah. So, where in the world was Ezra Miller and Takata Iron Eyes? With increasing pressure from the media and the news of their alleged sexual relationship, Ezra took Takata, hopped on a plane, and flew to Vermont to stay at his family's 96-acre farm. Days later, other house guests, along with Ezra, called to Takata's parents to tell them that she was incapacitated after having taken LSD. You'd think taking her to the hospital would be the best course of action. No. According to her parents, who flew out to Vermont immediately, Takata was found incoherent and voiceless. She had screamed so relentlessly that she had lost her voice for several days. Let's reiterate that a 24-year-old befriended a 12-year-old, groomed her for five years, fled to a hippie farm, and created an environment that introduced her to sex and drugs. Not only did she partake in the use of hard drugs, she quite literally tripped into another dimension. She was found covered in bruises, which she claims were self-harm, inflicted due to the loss of her close friend. Luckily, an eyewitness had been with Ezra and Takata on multiple occasions, giving credibility to Ezra's alleged abusive and groomer behavior. Oliver Ignatius, a longtime music artist and friend of Ezra, witnessed Ezra's verbally abusive treatment of the then 18-year-old Takata in both both Hawaii and Vermont. In Hawaii, Oliver saw Ezra confiscate Takata's phone and pressured the girl to change her name to Gibson. On the Vermont farm, Ezra once again hid Takata's phone, I mean Gibson, and screamed obscenities at her for wearing makeup. It's Hiding hard. someone's phone it's is a specific disgusting. type of abuse that prevents the victim from seeking outside help. Oliver recalled hearing Ezra say, what the fuck are you doing? putting on this fucking clown paint. Like any victim who becomes the friend of a grown man, Takata stated that she was never abused, manipulated, or even screamed at. She said, that was queer dialogue about badly applied rouge on my part, which I appreciated. She continued by saying, I think the fact that a catty comment made by a queer person about makeup being considered abuse is actually quite homophobic rhetoric. There is a glaring problem with this entire case. Takata's analysis of the situation is backwards, and it's not even her fault. To Takata, this isn't great.